Yes. Hello. Um, well, I'm Chris Harris, uh, representing the Met Office, and I'm here uh, as the leader of the CMEMS Global Coupled uh, MFC. Um, and I thought I'd just start by clarifying what we mean by global coupled, because I know the word coupled can sometimes be uh, maybe slightly unhelpful. So we're not talking about ocean wave coupling or ocean biogeochemistry coupling or open ocean coastal coupling or any other form of the word coupling which your specific uh, community uh, might like to use. Uh, but in this case, as the title of the uh, presentation uh, suggested, we're talking about ocean atmosphere coupled system. So a two-way coupled system uh, where the evolving sea surface temperature and um, also the sea ice and surface currents feed back to the atmospheric model uh, every three hours. And in fact, in the upgrade we've got coming up next year, that will change to, to be an hourly upgrade. Uh, this system doesn't include a wave model at the moment, although at some point in the future uh, it may do. So a little bit of a background to coupled uh, atmosphere ocean systems. Um, as most of you know, they've been used for a long time for climate, decadal, seasonal, timescale applications. Um, and it's only more recently that people have started thinking about uh, using them on a shorter time scale. So currently, most short time scales, sort of seven-day numerical weather prediction and ocean forecasting, uh, uses uncoupled model component. Um, so typically, the atmosphere model would run using a, a persisted sea surface temperature analysis or a persisted SSP anomaly. Uh, and then you take output from the atmosphere model and use that to force the, the ocean model. And, and usually nowadays, the way that's done is that the ocean model calculates uh, the turbulent fluxes using the atmospheric state variables, but using its own bulk formulae. So that, and those uh, may or may not be the same as the ones which were originally used in the atmospheric model, which, which may have some consequences in, in your results. So uh, why use a coupled system? Well, of course, the real world is a coupled system. So we'd hope that uh, by correctly representing uh, all the ocean atmosphere feedbacks, we would be able to do a better job of producing both atmospheric and ocean forecasts. Um, we wouldn't necessarily expect that to happen straight away if we just throw together two different uh, atmospheric and ocean models because to some extent those models will have been uh, kind of tuned to compensate for not running in a couple mode. Uh, and, and putting those models together may also expose biases in the system that we've not really been aware of before because of the way the models have been run. And we probably expect the leading order benefit of coupling uh, to be uh, on the atmosphere component uh, but, of course, then more accurate surface fluxes uh, will then, in turn, improve the ocean forecasts. Um, so the situation is quite uh, complicated, I would say, in the balance of, of pros and cons between a coupled and uncoupled systems. And there have been whole workshops uh, dedicated to addressing some of these kind of things. So I'm only going to very briefly outline some of the pros and cons here and the many others that, that aren't mentioned. Um, but the key benefits of a coupled system, uh, at least from the atmosphere point of view, is that it can see an evolving sea surface temperature in particular. And there are particular cases where uh, there's good evidence that this can have an impact on your atmospheric modelling. So tropical cyclones are a key example, and uh, individual case studies and also uh, composites of lots of cases have shown benefit in that, in that case. You can better represent the diurnal cycle, and then that has an impact on the mean fluxes between atmosphere and ocean. Uh, from a practical point of view, if you've got one coherent system, you've got control over the forcing uh, going into your ocean model, so you're not reliant on some external provider of forcing, uh, perhaps changing its characteristics at a particular point and having an impact on your model. Um, I think this is potentially quite a key one in the future, that it's possible to provide a consistent set of, of surface met, ocean, and in future wave products, which for some users, um, as we move to higher resolution higher temporal resolution products or hourly products, uh, that one might be particularly important. And actually, there's some users where a compromise on quality of, the, uh, of one of those model components um, may be compensated for by the consistency of, of the full set of data. And using a couple model gives us consistency with uh, other couple modeling systems, so the sort of ones I've talked about already being used on different timescales, so within, within the Met Office, that's consistency with the seasonal, uh, decadal, and climate models. And that can be helpful both in understanding model errors and potentially using bias information to do things like bias correcting for the forecasts from 
the short range system, although we've not uh, done that in our, in our CMEM system uh, at the moment. But having said that, there are a number of potential problems. Um, sea surface temperature drifts are perhaps hardest con to control in, in a fully coupled system, and that, that could impact the quality of forecasts for both atmosphere and ocean. Uh, the atmosphere will typically see a lower resolution SST than is provided by the kind of austere uh, type sea surface temperature analysis used uh, by many NWP <laughs> systems. Um, that's true, at least for, for what we're talking about, where we're using a quarter of a degree ocean. And often the question is posed whether you should go to a couple model or to a high resolution model. And actually, the answer is probably you need both so that the atmosphere still sees a high resolution SST, um, but you've got the couple processes as well. There's the potential for kind of initialization adjustments and shocks uh, if the initialization is not coupled. And I'll talk a bit more about that. And of course, the whole procedure becomes more complicated because you've got a, a, a couple model and you've got to make decisions about where I judge the, the quality of the model to be most important, whether that's in the atmosphere or in the ocean, uh, and how I make those decisions. Operationally, uh, for a real-time model, then scheduling can be quite important, uh, particular issues with the different timescales in atmosphere and ocean, for the data assimilation and the, some of the delayed ocean observations. And you may have some additional computational costs as a result of running coupled systems, although if you were going to run the systems uh, separately in a particular organization, that's not necessarily a problem. So moving on to uh, the global coupled system that's provided to CMEMS. So we've been providing this uh, product here since MyOcean 2, so April 2014, V4 of MyOcean 2. Uh, and we provide a seven-day coupled forecast, which at the moment is initialized from an ocean-only analysis, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. We're providing daily mean fields of the sort of standard sort of set of variables that most of the MFCs are providing. And as well as the ocean analysis provided each day, 24 hours later, we provide an updated analysis, uh, allowing us to make use of some more ocean observations. Uh, so that's just a, a picture of the, the page in the catalog where you can get access uh, to that product. A few more details of the system, and I'd point you at the product user manual if you want uh, a lot more detail, so I'll skip over this relatively quickly. But we're using our, our foam ocean-only system to initialize the coupled model. So that's the NEMO ocean model and a size CIS model at quarter of a degree. We're using NWP from the Met Office system uh, for driving that ocean-only model. The ocean data assimilation uses NEMO bar, uh, and we use a, a fairly typical set of observations. So three satellite altimeters, including uh, JSON 3 as of uh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, simulating sea ice concentration using the OSSISAF product uh, provided through CMEMS. Uh, then the ocean state from that and the NWP analysis are used to initialize the couple model, which actually comes from our Glossy 5 seasonal forecast system using the first seven days of that. Again, it's the same uh, ocean sea ice resolution, uh, and that's got a three hourly coupling to a 50 kilometer resolution atmosphere. So this is a um, slightly uh, faint, so hopefully you can still see it, but it's, it's um, representing basically the same information I've just covered slightly more schematically. So a forced ocean-only foam system initializing a coupled uh, glossy system for the forecast. Um, and so I'll say a little bit about the, the product quality for foam. Now, we've already heard a bit about class four uh, diagnostics, um, and I don't want you to, to read too much into a, into a a comparison uh, like this. Uh, there are a lot of ways in which the class four is a, maybe a little bit of a blunt tool for uh, addressing product quality. And we heard this morning from Fabrice about different things we can look at. But it certainly illustrates that the foam system shown in red um, is, is, is certainly a very good uh, ocean uh, only analysis system. So we, we know we've got confidence in the quality of the, the analysis we're using to initialize our couple models. So that's an example for. Uh, sea level anomaly uh, for the analysis, and similarly for SST, again, performing well against other models. For the forecast, um, unfortunately, I don't have an equivalent of this plot showing the, the global coupled forecast, uh, but broadly speaking, it would be uh, very similar to that red line shown for the foam forecast. The quality of the forecast is very similar. So again, this is a, a three-day forecast. Um, where, again, the, the, the quality of the, the forecast from the global coupled system 
is certainly up there with, with the other systems. So that was the V2 system, which has been running for quite a while now. And just showing you what's going to change for V3, if I just flick backwards and forwards between these slides, the main change is that this uh, ocean-only initialization is going to be replaced by a coupled initialization. So we're going to have coupling uh, between atmosphere and ocean, even in the analysis part uh, of the system. And then the forecast system remains much more similar, although we're going to extend the forecast slightly and um, uh, increase the hourly coupling. But we'll no longer be using the foam system on its own or the glossy system. It'll be one uh, self-contained system to deliver the forecast. Now, a consequence of this coupled initialization is that we have to move to uh, a six-hourly cycling approach to fit with the way the atmospheric model does its data assimilation, uh, which uh, creates some extra complexities. And what we're using is a, a, what people tend to call a weekly coupled data assimilation. So uh, the V2 system um, has a separate atmospheric analysis, so the NWP analysis with a separate ocean uh, foam analysis, and then those two things are combined together to produce a coupled glossy forecast. The V3 system, these uh, model innovations are calculated within the context of a couple model. They're fed into uh, data simulation systems which are still independent, so still not directly allowing atmosphere uh, observations to influence the, the ocean increments and vice versa. Um, but then the increments themselves are fed back into the couple model. So that's what we tend to refer to as, as a couple data, weekly coupled data simulation. And so I'll just show that uh, to illustrate in some sense the way that our cycling works operationally. So we have lots of separate six-hour cycles and sort of catch-ups to allow us to make use of late ocean observations. Uh, so uh, I'm not expecting you to see the detail on that, but it's just an idea of the complexity. So in terms of the impact on the quality of the system, some work with a prototype earlier showed that, generally speaking, there was a reduction in the data assimilation increments for a sea surface temperature when running with the weekly coupled data assimilation. So wherever this is blue, we've got a reduction in, in uh, SST increments in, in this system. So we saw uh, small but beneficial uh, differences in, in the ocean analysis. And I, I thought th these are result, very early results from the system that's been running for a, for a few weeks now, ready in preparation for for V4 next year. Uh, and these are, these are examples of where um, the old system actually had some problems with initialization because of adjustments between two slightly inconsistent systems. So this is a kind of spot the odd one out sort of exercise. Up here we've got a CI six day forecast from the V2 system uh, and then the V3 system on the right. Uh, the bottom left we've got the, the ocean analysis foam analysis valid at that day. So essentially this is kind of truth because it's assimilating sea ice concentration uh, and for comparison that's the foam forecast. So you'll see that the, the old system, if the projector's um, reasonable, is qu showing quite an increased ice growth during the forecast compared to these two um, and, and incorrectly because of a, an initialization issue with the, the way the uh, freezing temperature was, was parameterized in the models. So by having a consistent system at V3, we avoid those kind of problems. And there's a similar example with mixed layer depth, where you can see in the old V2 system, uh, the mixed layer depth along the uh, equator, this is just a one-day forecast in this case, looks quite different to uh, the V3 system and foam and the, uh, the kind of verifying analysis. Uh, and again, that was due to adjustments between the, the ocean-only um, analysis system and then the fully coupled system with the way the pressure correction bias was being used in that case. So we're avoiding some of those problems by moving to a more coherent system. Actually, those sort of issues could have been addressed in the individual ocean-only system, but it's very hard when you've got different systems in different parts of an organization to keep everything in sync. So it's much easier to do that within the, uh, a fully consistent system. So this is my Last slide, Marie, so don't worry. Uh, so we're moving to what we call a weekly coupled analysis you system. Um, six hourly assimilation windows with a sort of catch up to make sure we're still using late observations as we always have done, an hourly coupling frequency. And I think the important things here, we've now got exactly the same atmospheric configuration, both in terms of science and resolution for both the analysis and the forecast, and similarly for the ocean. And, and we've been able to remove various other inconsistencies between the analysis and forecast, the, the salinity-dependent freezing temperature I just talked about and the impact that was having on the sea ice. 
uh, issues with the pressure correction. And as a consequence of these, we're also using the same bulk formulae in both um, analysis and forecast, which I think will have a, a big impact in helping to understand uh, the benefits of coupling. So having kind of removed these inconsistencies, we'll be able to particularly focus on, on where the coupled system is, is outperforming an ocean-only system and how it compares to, to other systems. So thank you very much. Thank you.